Hello, welcome back to Chris's Beer Reviews. Hope you're doing really well. We're getting towards the end of the week, which is always good, unless you work at weekends, um, then it's not so good. So tonight's beer that we're doing on the channel is Tetley's number four premium lager. And I'm gonna be upfront and honest, I have had it. I've had it a few times, actually. And I couldn't decide whether to review it or not. And I, I know there's plenty of reviews on there and I've watched some of those reviews as well. So again, being honest, I have watched reviews on it. Um, but it won't change the way I review it. And then my friend uh, Barry from All The Beer No Idea, he reviewed it yesterday or the day before, which is when I was going to review it, and then I saw his review go on, and I thought, oh, I just won't bother reviewing it. I had a chat with him on WhatsApp, and he was like, just crack on and, and get it reviewed. So I am going to review it, and I liked it, so I should review it. Uh, I didn't think I was going to like it, because there it is. Tetley's number four. It says on the back it's the sort of lager that's proper decent, and it is decent. Um, and I really didn't think I was going to like it because Tetley's are owned by Carlsberg, so a big macro brewery, and we all know what Carlsberg have done to beers, and we all know generally how kind of poor Carlsberg lager is, so I didn't expect much, much from Tetley's number four, but I was so pleasantly surprised with actually how good it was, and it just goes that these big macro brewers, they can do it every now and then. They can turn out a, a fairly decent lager for the price they're selling it at. So the first time I tried it, it was from Tesco's, I think in a big 660 ml bottle. And I've since bought it in four packs and it was four pounds, so a pound a can. And it's decent for a pound a can, it really is. But anyway, let's stop waffling on with the waffle. Oh, let's crack it open, get in a glass, see how it looks, how it sniffs and how it tastes. Hope your week's been good. I've had a tough week. Um, some strange things going on this week, which has made it a bit of a struggle at times. Almost a bit, but it has been emotional at times this week. But we're getting towards the weekend. So there we go. Let's pop that on there. So Tetley's number four, premium lager. Oh, and it comes in uh, pretty decent, 4.6% for a supermarket lager most of them are all drop into like 4.1 and 4.2 so 4.6 is really nice to see there it is in the glass and not a lot of carbonation going on in there lovely golden color almost golden straw with a nice one finger head let's see how she sniffs the aroma is quite quite subtle but it's got a good aroma it is subtle but it's what it tastes like got a nice malty aroma to it. You definitely pick out the malts. It's got a nice sort of delicate, subtle, citrusy zing type on the aroma. Almost slightly honey-like as well. It's got sweetness to it, but not a nasty sweetness. It smells good as well. So let's crack on with how she tastes. I know how it tastes, so I'm going to share it with you. Cheers, everybody. It is good. It does say, serve proper cold. This is proper cold. And proper cold is nice and refreshing. It's not super crisp, but it is refreshing. It has got a, a nice tiny little bit of finish on the back. And the only thing that I think lets this down is that that bitterness on the back is a tiny, tiny bit metallic. But the mouth feels good. It's good in the mouth. It's quite soft in the mouth for a lager. Lovely multi tones to it, and it's really got a citrus type element to it. Citrus, lemon, floral, slightly bready, but it's all really what I like about it is it's all really well balanced. They all just seem to balance well together, if that makes sense. Nothing overpowers the other, nothing that they, they all just work together. It's, it's a really good beer. Even I know it's it's cheap on the grand scheme of things, but it's just decent. It's clean, definitely is refreshing. It's not it's not crisp because it's got that kind of maltiness to it, that breadiness to it. But the citrus thing that sits alongside that is really really nice. Almost a slight slight pepperiness to it. Oh, 
I really like it. Um, so much so, I, I did buy more. It's a great fridge filler. Um, a, a sessionable beer. Hot days that we've been having, it's been fantastic. Sat outside with, with one of these, on, a, on one of these hot lovely days we've had, and it's just gone down the treat for a macro beer, a macro lager. It's, it's very good. For me, this absolutely wipes the floor of things like Foster's, Carlsberg, Carlin, and I know they're not benchmark beers, but it, it, it's better than Brewdog's Lost Lager, which I didn't mind. It trumps all of those for me. I, I hope, I hope it does well for them. It's a good beer, would I recommend it? Absolutely. It's a good lager. Okay, it's not mind blowing, but for its money, it's bloody decent. I do really like it, and I'm surprised. I didn't think I would, being that it's come out of the Carlsberg stable. Watch it grow in popularity. Watch this build, watch this become a massive big seller, and then watch, watch Carlsberg ruin it by dropping that ABV in probably six to 12 months. They'll drop the ABV. But they'll get brand loyalty on it, and people will be buying it and being loyal to it, and then they'll drop the ABV. Guarantee it. That's my only criticism of what I think is likely to come. Because that's what they're doing, aren't they? They're all at it. Let's hope they do keep it this way. I'm rambling, I'm waffling. It's, <laughs> it's a good lager. Go and get some, let me know what you think. Whack something in the comments. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe. Uh, but let me know, if you've had it, let me know. Again, I'm doing my silly backwards and forwards. I'm all done, I'm getting out of here. I'll see you on the next one, bye now.